The Cavalcade of America, sponsored by DuPont, maker of better things for better living through chemistry. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Cavalcade of America, sponsored by DuPont. Tonight we bring you a story based on facts of our Navy in action with Edwin Jerome of the Cavalcade Players in the role of the submarine commander in Diary on a Pig Boat, an original Saturday evening post story by Frederick C. Painton, made into a radio play for Cavalcade by Stuart Hawkins. Ralph Bellamy, who was to have been with us tonight, will be Cavalcade star January 25th. As a special guest tonight, we will present at the close of our play, Lieutenant Commander Willard A. Saunders, who recently was awarded the Navy Cross for Distinguished Service. In accordance with naval regulations, all names of ships, places, and individuals mentioned in this broadcast are fictitious. The technical references and operational details are authentic, but are so employed as not to give aid or comfort to the enemy. Starring Edwin Jerome in Diary on a Pig Boat on the Cavalcade of America, sponsored by DuPont. Zero, 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 zero to zero, four, zero, zero hours. Sea calm. Slight ground swell. Wind force zero. Barometric pressure, 3010. Air temperature is 78.5. Water temperature 80 zero. Course 165. Cruising on service. That's the terse, Speed, prosaic way the Navy describes a calm and beautiful night in the western Pacific. And through the darkness, a long, low sliver of steel slides leisurely along, its narrow deck awash, only its conning tower clear of the water. Night is a respite for this ship. From dawn to dusk, she must prowl below the surface. For she is on offensive patrol in enemy waters, and is the hunted as well as the hunter. On the Conning Tower Bridge, young Ensign Waller is watch officer. What time is it, Quartermaster? 4.47, sir. Not long till dawn. The sky's beginning to lighten a bit in the east already. You'd better call the skipper. Yes, sir. No need of that, Mr. Waller. I'm up already. Morning, sir. Morning. You didn't get much sleep, did you? Oh, uh, enough. Excited anything? Nothing, sir. The ocean's been empty as a church on a Monday morning. Hmm. How's she heading, Franklin? One six five on the nose, sir. Right. No trouble holding her on the mouth tonight, eh? No, sir. Easy as steering a baby buggy this weather. What do you know about baby buggy? You're not married, are you, Franklin? No, sir. But my sister's got a set of twins. I helped her wheel them when I was home last time. Oh, twins, eh? I thought I was the only man on board who'd wheeled a set of twins. Well, yours are your own, sir. Franklin's only a twin's uncle. Yes. I expect mine have about outgrown that double-barreled pram by now. Well, kids can do a lot of growing in a year, I guess. Mm, they sure can. You'll see when you get one of your own. Oh, I won't worry about that till I've found out who's going to be its mother. That's still unsettled. This is well for you and her, too, until this business is over. I'm going below to the control room. Keep her on the same course and speed until we submerge at sunrise, Mr. Waller. Yes, sir. Same course and speed until we submerge... Morning, Gallagher. What's that I smell? Coffee? The cook would just do with a fresh pot, sir. Hey, Wash. Wash, come on back and let your moke. The captain wants some. Yeah, I'll be right there in a minute. We'll be right here, sir. No hurry. Three enemy destroyers, three points forward on the starboard beam. Five thousand miles away, heading straight for us, sir. Very well, Mr. Wallen. <laughs> Steering transferred to control, sir. Diesel stop. All ventilators closed, sir. Bridge secure, sir. Our hatch closed, sir. All ballast vents open, sir. Pressure in the boat. Take it to 60 feet, Mr. Mead. Full dive on the bow diving plane. Full dive on the bow plane. Aye, aye, sir. Ten degrees on the stern diving plane. Ten degrees on the stern plane. Aye, aye, sir. Motors ahead, 2,000 aside. Motors ahead, 2,000 aside, sir. Sir. There were just three destroyers, Mr. Waller? Uh, yes, sir. Headed right for us. But it was still too dark for them to have seen us. I mean, I, I think it was. Forty-five feet. All ahead, no. 
All ahead now, Mosa. Propeller sounds. Bearing 7-4, sir. They're coming fast. 50 feet. 55 feet. Level off. 60 feet. 60 feet. 60 feet. She's heavy forward. Pump from the forward to the aft trim tanks. Aye, aye, sir. That'll do. Final trim, sir. Level at 60. Propeller sounds. Bearing 8-1 now, sir. Closing in fast, too. I don't think they could have seen us. Bearing 8-4 now, sir. Looks like they'll go right over us. Maybe they've got better eyes than you think, Juan. No need no detective to hear now. Whatever they had in their minds, it was us, Mr. Waller. Uh, I didn't think they saw us. Hey, Red. Red Franklin. Yeah. Didn't that note remind you of the Times Square subway station? Honest, Gallagher. More things can remind you of Times Square. Propeller sounds bearing 266. Receding. Those destroyers are in awful hurry, Captain. Just what I was thinking. They're the advance guard for something. And something rather important, I should say. Oh, well, whatever it is, we're inside the guard ring now. Stop all motors. Aye, aye, sir. All motors stop, sir. Listen all round, Tom. Destroyer propellers still bearing 266. But much fainter, sir. No. No, nothing but those destroyers, sir. Well, it's almost sunrise topside. A few minutes more, it'll be light enough up there to use the periscope, Mr. Mead. Nothing on the sound detector, sir. Not even the destroyers now. Very well. All ahead, normal. Aye, aye, sir. All ahead, normal, sir. Take her up to periscope depth, Mr. Mead. Full rise on the bow plane. Full rise on the bow plane, sir. Level at periscope, then, sir. Up periscope. Up periscope. Aye, aye. Lighten up to see anything yet, Captain? Yeah. If there's anything to see. Don't look like he's finding nothing. Quiet, Gallagher. Ah. He spotted something. Quiet. Enemy cruiser bearing 075 relative. Looks like a big one. Down periscope. The silhouette book, Mr. Wallace. Here you are, sir. Hmm. No. Ah, this is it. Japanese heavy cruiser of the Hura Tiger class. One of their newest. And biggest. Hot doggy. Up periscope. That's her, all right. Angle on the bow, 15 starboard. 10,000 yards. Mark. Mark. Bearing 232 true. Course 040 true. You are 2600 from the track. Enemy cruiser speed 20. Enemy cruiser speed 20. Down periscope. Aye, aye, sir. What do you make it, Mr. Mead? You've got 12 minutes to approach for a bow shot. A bow shot? Oh, baby. Hmm. I shall fire within 1,000 yards, Mr. Mead. Right, sir. All ahead, 3,000 aside. 20 degrees right rudder. To course 310. Aye, aye, sir. A bow shot and less than 1,000. Boy, this is going to be good. <laughs> You are listening to Diary on a Pig Boat, starring Edwin Jerome on the Cavalcade of America, sponsored by DuPont. As our play continues, ten minutes have elapsed since Commander Haas has sighted a Japanese cruiser and has ordered his men to make ready for attack. All tubes ready for firing, sir. Very well, Dweller. Enemy propeller sounds, bearing zero 08. Up periscope. Aye, aye, sir. Come right to course 315. Down periscope. Right to course 315, sir. Hold her on it. Slow to 1500 aside. 1500 aside, sir. Up periscope. Steady as she goes. Steady as she goes, sir. Stand by. Fire one. One fired, sir. Fire two. Two fired, sir. Fire three. Three fired, sir. Fire four. Four fired, sir. Down periscope. Full left rudder. Full left rudder, sir. Take her down to 100 feet, Mr. Mead. Full dive on the bow plane. All ahead, 3,000 aside. Full dive on the bow plane, sir. 3,000 aside, sir. 
Watch out. Them pencils don't slide off the chart table, Lieutenant. Yeah, I got them. How'd you look at them? Big as a house. If I didn't miss completely, we were hearing something at 55 seconds. 50 seconds now. 50 feet. 55. 60 feet. All ahead normal. All ahead normal, sir. 80 feet. 85. 90. Check it with Bob Blaine. Aye, sir. 95. 98. Level off. Aye, aye, sir. 100. 100. 100. 100. Final trim at 100 feet, Captain. Nice dive, Mr. Mead. Stop all motors. All motors stop, sir. Listen all around, Thompson. Cruiser propeller sounds. Speed unchanged, sir. Sure is warming up in here. Quiet. Any second now. Hot doggy. Two explosions on the starboard beam, sir. We heard him, you lug. Quiet. Only two, I guess. Two out of four isn't so bad, Skipper. Wow, what was that? That wasn't no torpedo. That must have been our magazines blowing up. Gallagher's right. You got to wear it hurts, Skipper. <laughs> Enemy propeller sounds of sea, sir. Yippee! Honorable Jappy, don't feel happy. Pipe down. Those destroyers will be back here looking for us in a hurry now. All ahead normal. All ahead normal. Aye, aye, sir. In the logbook, the entry reads... Two explosions heard at 0544 hours. Another louder explosion, believed to be cruiser's magazines, heard at 0556. Believe enemy cruiser badly damaged or sunk, as enemy propeller sounds ceased with last explosion. Propeller sounds approaching, sir. Bearing 276. Stop all motors. More than one ship. Coming in fast. About 35 knots. The destroyer's all right. Rig for depth charge, Mr. Waller. Rig for depth charge. Pass the word to all compartments. Rig for depth charge. Rig for depth charge. Rig for depth charge. Get them watertight doors closed. Lively there. Franklin, pass out cotton for the men to put in their ears and see that they do it. Aye, aye, sir. All men not needed, lie down and brace yourselves. Get hold of something and hang on. We may be shaken up a bit. All watertight doors closed and dogged securely, sir. All right, Gallagher. Stuff that cotton in your ears or you'll be minus your hearing. Aye. Franklin, board Gallagher at your stations. Aye, 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 and sir. Thompson, of course. Yes, sir. Everybody else, lie down. Rig for depth charge, sir. Very well. Enemy propellers within a thousand yards, sir. Speed and bearing unchanged. Hey, Red. See what I mean about Times Square subway station? All right, hang on, boys. They started laying their eggs. Don't remind me of Times Square at all, Gallagher. There go the lights. Just made them flicker, that's all. Hang on. She'll write herself. Cowboy. Oh, yeah. I'll take the lights again. Gallagher, switch on the battle lantern. Aye, sir. Oh, it's hurt, sir. He was throwing against the regulator valve. I ain't hurt. A little whack on the cunt. They're moving away. How about those main lights? Main lighting circuit dead, sir. 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 We're below test step, sir. Blew us down a bit, didn't they? All ahead, normal. Aye, aye, sir. What's the matter, Gallagher? No power on the starboard motor, sir. Only the port side's working. No power on the steering motor, sir. Shift to hand steering. Call the motor room, Gallagher. Aye, aye sir. Shifted to hand steering, sir. Shifted to hand control of both diving planes, sir. Main motor contactor panel on the starboard motor is broken, sir. Pressure hull is beginning to crumble, sir. We're well below test. We'll have to take a chance on the hearing us. Take us up away, Mr. Mead. Full we'll rise that on the port motor. Full we'll rise on the bow planes. Aye, sir. Full we'll rise on the bow planes, sir. Cripes, is that depth needle stuck there? Beginning to rise, sir. Level off at 160 feet, Mr. Mead. A flashlight on chart table, Mr. Waller. Right here, sir. I thought so. Deep water here with this bottom at 180 feet, about 12 miles west. If we can get over there, we got a chance. Uh, we'll level off at uh, 160, Mr. Mead. Enemy propeller sounds returning, sir. What's our depth? 170, sir. 168. Stop the motor. Listen all around. Enemy propeller sounds approaching. Bearing 182 relative. Distance now about 
Enemy propeller sound stopped, sir. I thought he'd stop to listen pretty soon. Well, we'll outweigh him, that's all. We won't be able to control our depth very long without headway, sir. Long enough, I hope, Mr. Mead. How'd you cut your hand, Mr. Waller? Oh, it's nothing at all, sir. I must have scraped it against the aft elevator chain when we were being bounced around. You better have the pharmacist's mate look at it as soon as we're secure. Yes, sir. No propeller sound, sir. Depth 180, sir. 182. Losing steerage way, sir. No propeller sound, sir. Very well. 190. 193. Losing control of depth, sir. Very well. No propeller sound, sir. Ain't them guys are going to start up their engines? Low test step, sir. Settling fast. So I see. Propeller sound, sir. Bearing 185 degrees and going away. Mm-hmm. Full rear stat on the port motor. Take her up to 100 feet, Mr. Mead. Step bombs. Bearing 185. Going away, sir. Those rats seem to be on the wrong scent now. Pass the word to secure from depth charge, Mr. Well. But in the logbook, it only says... Attacked by two enemy destroyers at 0628 hours. Three depth charges moderately close. No casualties. Lighting and electrical control systems damaged by shock. Main motor contactor panel on starboard motor out of order. Attack ended 0652 hours. We should be over the shallow bottom now. Take it down easy, Mr. Mead. Stop the motor. Half dive on the bow plane. Aye, sir. Half dive on the bow plane, sir. We should find bottom at 180 feet. Yes, sir. Depth 175. As soon as we're on bottom, see that the men are paid, Mr. Waller. Yes, sir. 180. 184. 186. Looks like the charts are wrong, Skipper. Our dead reckoning may be out of it. 190. Where the heck is that bottom? 193. We're down. Blood the regulator. Pass the word on the bottom. Mr. Mead, detail your repair crew. All others will lie down and stay quiet to conserve oxygen. say get that motor panel fixed. You've been here long enough for my money. Hey, boy. Got any gum? Uh, only what I'm chewing. I didn't feel sort of sick. So hot in the air. Thought some chewing gum might help my stomach. What's the... What's the temperature reading now, Mr. Waller? 105. Huh. That all of it. We used to get it 120 back in Kansas, but it never felt like this. Uh, light a match, please, Mr. Waller. Look at that. Barely glowed for a second or two and went right out. Spread the CO2 absorbent powder. Bleed all oxygen bottles for 30 seconds, Mr. Waller. Yes, sir. Thank you. Boyd? Yes, sir. All right, sir. Oh, that helps a little. Four hours. Six hours. Nine hours, still on the bottom. The air is so thick you can cut it into chunks. The heat under the pressure at this depth is like an oven. Men lie inert, stirring only when one of them coughs the queer, straining cough. That's the prelude to nausea. And the hours drag on, and the repair crew works doggedly, speaking in hoarse whispers that are queerly audible through the five compartments of the silent, tortured ship. And the logbook merely says... Still on bottom affecting repairs. Lead oxygen bottles at 1805 hours. One eight zero five hours. That's five minutes past 6 p.m. And still they're there. 6.30. 7 o'clock. The sun has set up above. Down here there's only heat and silence... And heads that ache from the closeness of the air. It's taking them so long in that motor room anyhow. 
Maybe Gallagher's daydreaming about Times Square. He's forgetting to work. Ah, no. <coughs> Fix him. Panel's his only chance of getting back to Times Square. He's working all right. He could be on the surface now if he'd snap out of it. <clears throat> the fresh air coming down that hatch. The stars winking. Hi, damn it. Hey, hey, lights. lights. I got them fixed anyhow. Huh? Lights, fellas. All right. All right, Skipper. Lighting, electrical control, circuits repaired. And so is the main motor panel. Very well. Stand by to surface. Stand by to surface. All hands to stations. Snap into it, men. Oh, Here we go, boys. Express to the roof, huh? Depth 40 feet, sir. Stop. All motors. Aye, sir. Listen all round. What the heck? It's dark topside now. What's the delay about? Yeah? Suppose we should pop up in the middle of a Jap convoy. You want to breathe fresh air, not shell fire, don't you? No propeller sound, sir. All ahead, normal. Oh, number one tank. <laughs> On the surface, sir. Open the conning tower hatch, Franklin. Yes, sir. You can taste the air. It's so fresh and cool. Transport to the bridge, Mr. Waller. Let the men off watch go topside by threes. Yes, sir. Smoking lamps lit for ten minutes below deck. Captain Haas, sir. Yes? What is it, Franklin? A fleeing debris on the port side, sir. The Japanese seaman's captain, a lot of junk that must be off that cruiser. The water's lousy with it. Nice shooting, Skipper. It's midnight again. On the bridge, the skipper has the watch and is starting the new day's page of the logbook. He writes carefully, neatly. C calm. Wind force, two. Barometric pressure, 3015. Air temperature, 76. Water temperature, 78. Another nice night tonight, eh, Gallagher? Yes, sir. We've sure been lucky in the weather this trip. A real nice run, I call it. Thank you, Edwin Jerome. Ladies and gentlemen, in a few moments, Mr. Jerome will return to the microphone to introduce our special guest of the evening... Lieutenant Commander Willard Saunders of the United States Navy. Before we hear from him, we have a story of chemistry in today's world. Army Navy E for Excellence awards have now been announced for 17 DuPont plants in every part of the country for their performance in turning out many different kinds of war materials. The latest presentation, made a few days ago, is so extraordinary that we think you'd like to hear the story. The latest Army Navy E went to the DuPont Company's Nylon Research Laboratory and Pilot Plant, one of very few awards made to a research group. These DuPont men and women aren't manufacturing tanks or planes on a production line. They're working with laboratory and research equipment, using their brains, their technical know-how, exploring the complicated process known as polymerization to increase constantly the military uses of nylon, now most widely used in parachutes. What the Army and Navy think of this kind of brain work as a contribution to winning the war is revealed by the words of Brigadier General Benjamin W. Chidlaw, who presented the award. Standing in the research laboratory where Nylon was born, General Chidlaw said, The production of new equipment must keep ahead of the needs of the armed forces. The weapons must be ready and waiting for the man, not the man for the weapons. Thus, in a very real sense, the research laboratory is the first line of defense, the first front the point where victory begins. General Chidlaw went on, in presenting to the men and women of this company, the Army Navy E, both services are bestowing on you an official citation for distinguished service on that first line. And in concluding, the general said, here you have created and developed nylon. Here and in other DuPont plants you manufacture it. The Army and the Navy need it. They need it quickly and in large quantities. 
It has been and will continue to be tremendously important to our air forces as a replacement for no longer available silk. The armed forces gratefully acknowledge this fact. Our millions of men in cocky and blue look to you for equipment to be used on the battlefronts, land, sea, and air, and they are thankful to you for your efforts, unquote. With this nylon award, 17 Army-Navy pennants now fly over DuPont plants. These pennants are symbolic of the wartime performance records of the DuPont Company, peacetime maker of better things for better living through chemistry. And now our star of the evening... Edwin Jerome. Ladies and gentlemen, we of the Cavalcade Players have great pleasure in welcoming tonight and now in presenting to you a young naval officer who has himself commanded a submarine. Lieutenant Commander Willard A. Saunders, United States Navy. Lieutenant Commander Saunders was awarded last November the coveted Navy Cross for Distinguished Service. Ladies and gentlemen, Lieutenant Commander Saunders. Thank you. Our submarine service has long been known as the silent service. That is, we're not given to saying much about ourselves, and we don't have a great deal of publicity. <clears throat> Tonight you have heard that silent service speak through the actors in this dramatization. Of course, they cannot really convey to you all that takes place, nor all that passes through our minds as we cruise beneath the surface. But this play has struck me as realistic. And gripping. After hearing it, you will agree with me, I think, that too much credit cannot be given to the officers and enlisted men who are backing up the captain all the time. Their fighting spirit can't be beaten. Our submarines, and incidentally, because the public has clung to the name Pig Boat, don't think they are not clean, powerful, large, and pretty comfortable, for they are. Our submarines are carrying the war right to the enemy. They are continually on the offensive and getting results. This story tonight has shown you that our subs are sinking the rising sun. Ladies and gentlemen, before telling you of next week's program, I want to give a special message to young women between the ages of 18 and 35. Nursing is one of the critical woman power shortages of the war. 15,000 nurses have been taken from our hospitals into the Army and Navy Nurse Corps since Pearl Harbor. Thousands more are needed, both at home and in the field. If you are a citizen and have graduated from high school, won't you join the fight to help people keep well and get well? Next week, ladies and gentlemen, Cavalcade of America, sponsored by DuPont, presents Soldiers of the Tide, a story of the United States Marines on Guadalcanal. Our star will be the popular screen actor, Dennis Morgan. Don't forget next week, Dennis Morgan in Soldiers of the Tide, an exciting story of the fighting Marines on an island in the Pacific. The orchestra and original score on tonight's program were under the direction of Don Voorhees. This is Clayton Collier sending best wishes from DuPont. The appearance on this program of Lieutenant Commander Saunders does not necessarily constitute an endorsement of the sponsor's product by the Navy Department. The program came from New York... This is the National Broadcasting Company.